All right, welcome back to the press conference here for the OTB Open. We're here with Sean Jack and Sean Merce. Mercy. We want to ask you two, the co-TDs of this event, how you're feeling about it. So let's start off with how many years have each of you been playing and running events? Uh, I've been playing disc golf since 2000, I think, was the first time I played. And uh, the first event that I ran, I think, was the San Francisco Bag Tag Challenge in like 2017. Uh, I discovered disc golf late 2007, mostly 2008, and my first event, my first PDJ event was the 2012 SF Safari, so about 10 years. So that's pretty good for the tournament directing experience, and you guys hosted it here at Swenson Golf Course last year. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the changes? We know that this is a redesigned course. Yeah, um, so coming out of last year, we were really happy with the course that we had. Uh, we felt that it, it was a little tight uh, for spectators in particular. And we're looking like three to five years out, maybe on this site for that long. And so we wanted to take advantage of the whole property essentially this year so that we could design a course that would accommodate three to 5,000 spectators in at three once. to five years at once. Yeah. <clears throat> and so far, um, are we looking at having a pretty big gallery anticipating a good turnout for spectators? Yeah, I just checked out sales uh, before I jumped in here and we're at about 1,100 tickets and VIP is sold out across the board so I anticipate the general missing tickets will continue to surge and I'd bet we get to between 1,500 and 2,000 by Sunday. Not all at once, that's total over three days. Excellent. Just a couple more questions here. Um, we mentioned like a three to five year plan for the OTB Open. Can you share just a couple of those main goals for where this event might head to in the future? Um, we're looking to basically continue what we've done over the last uh, three times we've run this event, two times at S as SFO and then last year as OTB Open. Um, our main focuses are to put on a really good competition and a good show for a lot of spectators. Um, yeah, we spent like $40,000 on spectator experience this year from like the stage on hole one. We have an elevated viewing platform on hole six, bleachers on 18, bleachers on one, professional event management services to do parking, to do onboarding of spectators. Uh, it's, it's a lot of money, uh, but we, we really believe that the spectator experience and the gate is where we can bring in a lot of income to increase the purse and just the overall experience for everyone. And I think the other thing that we are looking to scale is just the volunteer program and you know bringing in a lot of help uh, but making them also feel important sounds like the longevity of this event will be around for a while so one last question for the two of you being competitors in the sport sean jack your last win was in 2011 and we know that <laughs> sean's first and only pro win was as er, or as recent as 2015 is there a, a win. td kind of competition you. between you two <laughs> I'm a 970 plus rated golfer. He's, I don't know, 840? I don't play. No. <laughs> 940 something, probably. We're 940, about, if I play well, honestly, enough, we play. I could get to 950. We're about a stroke or two off each other. That's a good question. I appreciate you bringing that up. <laughs> Sean and Sean, this is Matt Rothstein, PDGA. Hey, Matt. Matt. Uh, typically, when we interview TDs before the event, there's only one of them. Uh, here you guys are together. Um, can you just tell a little bit about, about your partnership and uh, what about that partnership um, brings you guys together and makes this event special? Sure. Uh, so I was the, the TD of the 2018 SFO. Sean was the assistant. And then after that event, uh, we had a really good chat about forming a LLC, like a true business partnership. And at that point, it became apparent that assistant TD just didn't make any sense. I know it's the only way you can write it on PDGA, but he's honestly done more hours than I have this year. Like it's. I'm like getting choked up. <laughs> um, so like we're, we're true partners like financially and uh, the way we divide everything like on our, as far as like allocation of responsibilities is I'm pretty much income and he's expenses. So I raise money, I do the sponsorships, the vending, uh, I focus on ticket sales. And then he like was able to, I mean this year we did, we installed 32 tee pads at this course for a safari course that does not exist on Monday. And that's kind of crazy. And Sean was the, the head of that effort with oh, well over a thousand hours, well over five figures in expense. Um, so that's how we kind of look at things. Like I'm a sales guy, he's an engineer, and the two of us kind of make a really good team uh, to fill in each other's gaps. Yeah, I completely agree. I look to him to, to get the sponsorships and then, you know, I'm basically dealing with 
a lot of the coursework. I take responsibility for the course. Um, and I think have more time and opportunity to engage with the, the local, local community uh, in terms of networking, bringing in not just bodies as volunteers, but good, capable people who are invested. Um, yeah, I think we work really well together. The two of you uh, made an appearance this week on The Upshot. Um, it was an excellent episode. I recommend anybody who uh, hasn't heard it yet to go and listen to it. But Thanks. one Thanks. thing that stood out to me was that you discussed um, a lot of numbers, a lot mm -hmm. of financial numbers, and it's just very transparent overall. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what the, you know, what's the thinking behind that? What, what motivates you to go out and discuss the business side of things in so much detail? I don't see the downside in it, honestly. Like, uh, why be protective of these numbers, honestly? And I also work for the tour as, like, VP of Partnerships. And I truly hope other TDs can take the information we've given them and leverage to get better deals. Like, we're, we, the Disc Golf Pro Tour events now are major properties with millions of views for each event, bringing in thousands of people. Uh, and that doesn't even include all the earned media and all the media that comes from social. So it's, I, we, we feel strongly uh, that using that transparency can help move the sport forward. Like, I don't see why not share the numbers. Like, why keep it secretly? It only it'll help the next TD down the road. One thing that stood about uh, stood out from that podcast uh, to me was um, the redesign of the course here uh, in Stockton, and especially hole eighteen. Uh, maybe you guys took some inspiration from uh, hole eighteen at about. the fort. Uh, yes, we did. Um, last year, we our finishing hole uh, was not super strong. It didn't lend itself to, you know giving opportunities for a dramatic finish. Um, we did have some good finishes, but uh, we thought that, you know, the course otherwise finished really strong. Some of the last holes are some of the best on the course and have opportunity for some scoring spread. And so we wanted 18 to basically be the cherry on top and mm -hmm. give an opportunity like we saw at Worlds. Sean, Sean, thanks for being here. Um, you talked about the uh, investment in spectator experience. What can spectators expect besides the um, besides the disc golf itself? Sure. So, like, when you take the turn on to Alexandria Place here, you're going to have someone flagging you in the parking lot. So right away, it's like, where do I park? Right here. Uh, someone will park your, not park your car, but show you where to go. You'll be funneled into, like, a barricaded area where you'll be onboarded by a, a company that we're paying money to. Uh, they'll give you a, uh, you can scan a spectator map, get the caddy book. Uh, you know, just a brief discussion of the flow of everything. And then you come through the Zuka Trust over here, which we're really psyched about because there's some really cool contests uh, for user-generated content. And then you, you know, you basically get poured into the festival where the stage on hole one is right there where there are bleachers. The vendor village is in between 18 and one and 18 is right over here. So like, and when you walk in, the player's putting court is right there. Like, so they have privacy because it's barricaded, but you can get up close and see the player's putt from, you know, 20, 30 feet away. And then the driving range is in between 18 and 1. So everything here, like at Tournament Central, is a really cool flurry of activity. And uh, another thing that's really cool we're psyched about is the food court. They're going to have corn dogs, which is big, big news. Spread the word. And we have a 12-foot LED video wall, so you can watch the Disc Golf Network while you're eating and drinking. And then the thing that I'm, I love is down on hole 6, we have what we call the Party Peninsula, where there's another bar and grill. We have an elevated viewing platform and just a really cool space to take in everything in. You can watch five holes from there. Now, do you think that these kind of events, because you describe it as a festival, yeah. you know, and it's, you know, a, a, lo a lot of uh, TDs would describe it as a tournament, you know, you're a tournament director. Sure. Is it m more so we need to make this an event or a, uh, a festival rather than, you know, just a tournament? I think that's where like, the two of us come in. Like, he's so focused on competition, and I trust him to do that, that I, I don't have to. Like, I can focus on the rock show we have on, on Saturday night, where Kevin Jones might DJ before it. And all those kind of opportunities that we can reach people outside of our ecosystem, bring them in, watch them see Paige Pierce throw 500 feet, and say, you know, holy smokes, that, that's awesome. So like, m we need more and more cross-promotional opportunities to bring people into the sport, just knowing. And honestly, we're just copying what the PGA Tour does. It's like, it's not, this is not new. Like, I want a dunk tank. I want, you know, I want, we have a mini course that you can play. It's, we're really trying to make it fun. Now the course itself, what's special about this course? I mean, it's, it's lengthy. It's very visually uh, great to look at and watch either in person or over the broadcast. What's your favorite part of this course? It's gotta be the water holes. 
Um, I think they're challenging, fair. Uh, you get to kind of choose how, how much risk you want to take. Um, and I, I also really like all of the wildlife that are mm. just hanging out. Um, we have some, a family of foxes uh, and just I think overall the property is just really beautiful. All of the trees, you wouldn't really expect it, you know, driving around this part of California, but uh, it, it really is just a nice canvas for us to, to lay the course out on. Sounds excellent. We can't wait and thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so thank much. Thank you guys. Thanks everybody.